all right uh, welcome back so we were talking about the localized surface plasmons so how do we excite the localized surface plasmon well uh, there are multiple ways of doing it and one of the ways is actually to excite by what is known as uh, dark field microscopy okay so what we can do is we can have a microscope and you tr you shine light at an angle you know at a high uh, angle so that most of the incident light gets reflected and you don't see the reflected uh, immediate direct reflection but whatever gets scattered you can see for example what we can do is take a this this is a image taken using what is known as dark field microscopy so you have these metal nanoparticles which are dispersed on a glass slide and you look at it in the dark field mode okay and that is why the, the it's called as dark field because the background looks dark because the direct reflections are eliminated in the microscope there's a small uh, type of objective we have to, different type of objective we have to use if you use that essentially the direct reflections are eliminated and you end up getting only the scattered light and that's why it's called dark field and in contrast the regular bright field microscope is what is shown in the bottom okay wherein you can see these specks which are basically these nanoparticles but we don't see them clearly because there's a strong background okay so the incident light is actually uh, much stronger so that's one of the challenges of plasmonic resonances so we have these resonances which are very strong but if we have a single nanoparticle it, we have to take a lot of precautions to actually observe it okay like for example this dark field excitation if you do that you see these uh, nanoparticles of different colors the reason the colors are coming is each nanoparticle is of a different size and it has a different resonant wavelength and because of that it efficiently this part, this particle will efficiently excite or scatter red and this will scatter let's say green and blue and so on okay so you have these different types of uh, resonant different resonant wavelengths which will cause this scattering okay and you might ask where is the size dependence coming in for example in the quasi static limit that i have shown in the previous lecture you see that the there is no size dependence here the surface charge or polarization is essentially only dependent on the permittivity there is no size dependence so where is this coming from well it turns out that as you go to you know this quasi static description is truly valid when you have very small size nanoparticle but the moment the size becomes large you see that the quasi static limit breaks down what does it mean when we say that quasi static limit breaks down well the electric field is no longer con constant over a nanoparticle it can have a variation and that can lead to shifting of resonance okay so the ideal approximation that the electric field is constant all across a nanoparticle breaks down all right you can also have different resonant wavelengths because of changes in the geometry okay so uh, we considered a simple nanosphere okay which is the simplest object and if you actually look at the textbook you will see that uh, the solution also involves a lot of mathematics but the moment you have let's say triangles and pentagons and this different shapes of nanoparticles which by the way we can actually fabricate in the in the labs okay the chemistry uh, of these nanoparticles has become very advanced and people actually can control the shapes very well let's say if you have nanoparticles of different shapes like this because of the shapes there is different resonant wavelengths and what i mean by resonant wavelength is that you see this peak in this is a scattered light right so peak in scattered light okay scattered light exhibits peak at different wavelengths so you see that uh, if you look at the scattered light mode you'll see that the color is different for each of these nanoparticles it can happen and there is no easy way of understanding this uh, size dependence of the nanoparticles okay so i said that okay the quasi static limit breaks down so what why should you know why, why should the let's say in this case uh, i'm showing you the analytical calculations done by using what is known as me theory me theory analytical Me theory is a uh, technique that is given by Gustav Me, I think in uh, 19th century, 
he calculated what happens you know when you have light incident on these nanoparticles and then what you, you can actually compute it and we'll actually put the code for this on github we'll probably also try to have a small demo of that so that you can try it out so essentially if you do these calculations in this case i think this is for done for a silver nanoparticle of different diameters okay ag nanoparticle of different diameters going from 50 nanometers to 150 nanometers when you have this range of nanoparticles you see that the scattering cross section you know basically how efficient is this in scattering let's say if you have a nanoparticle how much is the scattering cross section so we said that already this is a resonant phenomena right so for example if i take a nanoparticle of this part size the physical size the cross section is let's say pi r square if that r is the radius of the particle then the pi r square is a cross section but because of the resonance effectively the particle is able to uh, scatter light much better the scattering cross section is greater than one okay if i normalize it to the physical geometry i can get it much higher than one and that is what effectively the cross section tells you so that's a very convenient way of representing it in this case what you are seeing is that scattering cross section is exhibiting a you know increase basically the overall scattering is increasing so nanoparticle size increases it's scattering better that kind of makes an intuitive sense and also the resonant frequency is red shifting why does a red shift happen okay the way you can think about it is that let's say if i have a nanoparticle of this size i am talking about this induced dipoles right now as the size of the nanoparticle increases as let's say i'll call this as let's say d diameter okay as d increases my dipole the restoring force right so restoring force f restoring decreases okay effectively right because the the charges are farther apart so the attraction coulomb magnetic attraction decreases and because of that if you look at the resonant frequency we have seen that for a simple harmonic oscillator it will be k by m wherein k is the the spring constant which is capturing the restoring force so now effectively my spring constant k is reducing right since my restoring force is decreasing my k reduces therefore my omega not omega radio this is if i call it as omega not i just want to capture that so omega not reduces so frequency of the resonance reduces that means in wavelength it red shifts increases okay it goes towards the right that's why we call it as red shift so you see as the size of the nanoparticle is increased there is a red shift in the resonance and it is also serving as a better scattering particle better scatterer rather okay so what is that all well uh, conveniently i have plotted what is known as a dipole mode in the case of a nanoparticle here on the left but if you look at the total cross section scattering cross section of a nanoparticle using me theory you will see that there is a shift which is basically because the dipole is shifting in the red into the red and also as the size of the nanoparticle increases there are this higher order modes that are coming in so this is basically the higher order mode in this case this is what is known as quadrupole mode higher order mode that comes in and then you see one more peak that is coming out all right so this is what happens when you increase the size of the nanoparticle so okay in the spectrum it is increasing but physically what is happening as i increase the nanoparticle all right to look at that let's look at how the electric fields look like so again using me theory we have calculated this so basically this is on the left this is what we call as electric dipole mode for a nanoparticle which is i think uh, diameter is 50 nanometers if i'm not mistaken let's see this is my line this is yeah roughly 50 nanometers and then i have another electric dipole mode which is for a uh, electric dipole d is basically in this case 150 nanometers and this is my quadrupole mode electric quadrupole d equal to 150 nanometers so what you are seeing on the plot is the electric field intensity more specifically it is the electric field in the x direction at the resonant wavelength so for example if you look at a 50 nanometer nanoparticle you have this peak here so at 365 nanometers we have seen the electric field and how does it look like well you see that the electric field is confined close to the edges why is this happening so if you look back in the electrostatics 
you will see that we had this nanoparticle and we kept on talking about this positive and negative charges which are accumulating right and if you look at the field lines we can actually draw them the field lines look let's say consider a nanoparticle in a constant electric field okay uniform electric field if i think of that i'll see that if i were to draw the electric field lines they look something like this you know i have my field lines which are coming into the nanoparticle here at the negative side and on the positive it keeps going out so but if you go far away from the nanoparticle you see that the electric field lines are not disturbed very much if you go very very far they are more or less undisturbed so you see like this so effectively this is my physical dimension the cross section of my nanoparticle so it's a spheric, uh, circular shape so i can pi r square or you know d is the diameter so i can calculate what is the cross section even though the physical cross section is small at resonance because of the strong uh, polarization that is happening the nanoparticle behaves as if it's much bigger so this is my actual if i were to compute i can think of a uh, scattering cross section which is larger than the physical dimension right scattering cs cross section okay and now at resonance we are seeing that there is a lot of charge accumulation that is happening that means how do we represent that in terms of fields well we actually draw denser electric fields right when you have a lot of charge you will have to have more denser electric field and denser electric field means that the intensity is larger and that is what you are seeing here electric field is stronger here on the edges so this is what we call as a dipole mode so the charge is on the plus and minus this is a dipolar mode what we call as and now what happens to this dipolar mode as you increase in size well the same similar behavior is maintained the field the field profiles look similar so we conclude that okay at even 455 nanometers for example this is 150 so this is roughly here at 455 nano 455 nanometers my electric field is looking like this so it is like a dipole and what happens at this lambda of 367 at 150 nanometer diameter you see this additional peak that has come in and that additional peak is what we call as quadrupole because instead of plus and minus now you have plus minus minus uh, plus minus so there are four of these charges effectively the okay and that is why we call it as a quadrupole instead of a dipole and you can also have higher order terms which is octopole and so on well the field depends uh, field lines uh, field intensity distributions become more complicated all right so basically this is what happens as you increase the size of the nanoparticle the the field is red shifting the the resonance is red shifting okay and the field lines exhibit a characteristic dipolar behavior and as the particle becomes much much larger the higher order modes and right now it's quadrupole you can even have octopoles and all coming in all right this is what we'll observe yeah sarab you have a question why is the resonance broadening well oh, why is the resonance broadening well it turns out that as the size of the particle increases it is actually able to scatter more efficiently or you know more scattering so the losses are more the scattering loss is more so the resonance is broader if you actually compute the amount of joule losses for these things it is not that much significant okay you can actually using me theory we can compute uh, basically you can compute what is known as sigma i can call it as cross section so i'll call as absorption cross section plus uh, scattering cross section i can compute what is known as extinction cross section okay extinction is the total amount of you know energy that is lost absorption plus scattering is called as extinction so i can compute these things and if i specifically look at what is this absorption cross section i'll see that uh, the absorption cross section is not that significantly broadened but it's just that the scattering losses are high and therefore the resonance becoming is becoming broader well this is as the size of the nanoparticle increases what happens as you reduce the size of the nanoparticle well for that what you see is i mean this is the graph that i have taken from this book you can go back and look at that so essentially this is the absorption of of course this is you know taken in a solution of nanoparticles dispersed in let's say water uh, we'll talk about it in the next lecture what happens when you have changed the medium but effectively what you see is that the absorption through that you know dispersion of nanoparticles is actually uh, it's becoming broader as the size of the nanoparticle decreases so for example this is two other diameter initially 9.2 down to 2.2 as you reduce the size you see that the absorption is becoming broader why does that happen well so far when we considered the metal properties we talked of uh, omega p and gamma gamma was a loss parameter right these are material parameters material parameters and depending on the metal we know what it is right so that's what we thought but it turns out that 
when you have let's say a nanoparticle of some size like this the electrons are moving in in response to light the electrons are moving but they just don't move only i mean they even scatter with the surface you can have multiple scattering at the surfaces and so on when this scattering happens so basically here electrons scatter at surfaces and essentially this scattering reduces the the lifetime you know between two events and because of that the losses increase okay so instead of gamma being purely an uh, you know material parameter it turns out that i can write gamma as basically a function of the radius of the particle okay and if the radius is quite small what happens is i can have the initial gamma not which is my material loss plus there is a basically this a is a is a constant you can think i mean they call it a phenomenological constant essentially to capture the scattering mechanism okay scattering let's say i'll call it uh, scattering mechanism dependent constant for example is a roughness parameter how much is that and so on you can compute and then vf is a fermi velocity so basically electrons move in a solid with some fermi velocity so depending on the velocity you can actually compute the rate so gamma is a scattering rate so basically i should have per unit per uh, unit time so essentially this is a dimensionless constant fermi velocity so meters per second and then this is the radius which is meters effectively so per second so effectively this whole thing becomes per second unit so what you see is if you go to very small diameters this becomes significant and then the loss increases and that's why the broadening happens but let's say if you go to above 50 nanometers and so on this size dependence rather basically if i go to larger particles let's say size dependence insignificant at large r okay but at large r the again the resonance is shifting because of other parameters but in smaller scale the resonance becomes broader so effectively you cannot have a scenario that you know if you go to small nanoparticles i'll have a very very sharp so if you looked at this picture oh as i increase my diameter the resonance is becoming broader so i'll actually go smaller and smaller i'll get a very sharp resonance the idea you know it turns out that if you have a very sharp resonance that can have a lot of applications so we always try to engineer that so it turns out that yeah if you go to very small nanoparticles of let's say 2 nanometers and so on again the resonance becomes weak the absorption is very small all right so uh, this concludes my discussion on the size dependent parameters so in the next lecture i'll talk about uh, how do we engineer these uh, resonances and what are they useful for okay so we have given the basic idea of what it is we will also talk about the applications in the next part and then once i finish that i'll conclude the discussion on the localized surface plasmons and then we'll move towards what are known as propagating surface plasmons spps okay and uh, so well plasmonics is a very broad area and what i'm trying to do is i'm trying to give you a glimpse of it i mean we can actually have a full semester course on that talking about various details and so on well uh, that is not the uh, idea for this course so i'm trying to give you the fundamental ideas which are useful broadly in many many different places okay all right with that i'll conclude any questions all right thank you so much and i'll see you in the next lecture bye